In today's video, I'm going to make a 2D annotation symbol that can be used in conjunction with the piping symbol adaptation built in Revit. This will be an annotative family and it will not be visible in the 3D views. The family will consist of three types, a riser symbol, a drop up and down symbol and a junction symbol. First, I'm going to create a new family and I need to look for annotation folder where I can use generic annotation. I don't need this red text, so I will have to delete it. Up on the ribbon, I can select reference line command. I click at the intersection of the existing reference planes and then I will do my second click up here so I can make a diagonal line at a 45 degree angle. Now I am using the align command to align and lock in place the bottom point of the line to the horizontal reference plane and then I will do the same for the vertical reference plane. Starting from the intersection of the vertical and horizontal reference planes I will create another reference line on the left side and I will also lock it in place. These reference lines are not going to be visible when the family will be loaded in the project. I am creating an angular dimension between the reference line and the reference plane. If I select angular dimension here on the ribbon, I have the option to associate it with a parameter. I will name this parameter angle. Notice that now the dimension moved on the opposite side. Next, I will make another angular dimension on the other side and I will associate it with the same parameter named angle. On the top left, I can go to family types and I will adjust a little bit so I can test this parameter I just created. It seems the parameter works just fine, so I will set it up back to 45 degrees and click OK. Here on the top left, I can select lines and center and arc. I click first time at the reference planes intersection and then I create an arch like so. Now Revit gives me the option to lock the arch to the reference lines and I will do lock it to the both. I will do another arch to the opposite side and this time I will just use the align tool command to lock the arch to both reference lines. If I select the right arch I see a temporary radius dimension that I will turn it from temporary to permanent. If I select it, I can also go up here and associate it with a parameter. Even if this is the radius, I will name this parameter size because it will control the size of the annotation. In order for this to be consistent, I need to apply the same parameter named size to the radius of the left arch. Once again, I will go ahead and see how everything reacts. Let's make the size 1 inch and the angle 30 degrees. I will click apply just to see the results and it looks like so far everything works just fine. So I'll turn it back to 45 degrees. If I select this arch, I can see that it is a generic annotation. I will make these lines wider so it's easier to see. In order to do that, I press VG on my keyboard to open visibility graphics override window and there I have something called object styles. Here there is a list where I can find and change generic annotation line size. I will set it up to 6. The riser symbol is gonna be a full circle, so I will use lines to create the top arch. One click in the center, one click to the left arch and one to the right. Now I can just lock these tiny locks that I now can see on each side. They are called toggle tangency. Finally, I will make the bottom arch and I will also lock the tiny locks on both sides. Now I have everything I needed for the riser symbol. Next, I need to set up the lines for when the pipe goes up and down and for the junction. I'm going back to lines and I will make a small line on the vertical plane. The reason I made it shorter is because I want to make it easy to align the horizontal plane to the bottom point of the line and I want to lock this alignment as well. Next I will make a dimension for this line. 
If I select the dimension, I can go up and associate it with the size parameter. This line will be used to show the up and down symbol and I need to create one more line on the bottom to show the junction. Same like I did with the other one, I will also need to lock it to the horizontal plane and associate its length to the size parameter. Before I continue, I will go again to the family types and check if all my lines are consistent with the size of the symbol. Seems that everything is fine so far. This arch and this arch will always be visible in all three versions of the symbol, but the other lines will not. I will select the bottom arch and here on the properties panel there is an option that controls the visibility of this particular arch that I just selected. Also next to it there is something like a tiny button and when I click on it, it opens this window where I can now make a visibility parameter. I will name it arch B from bottom and then click OK. Next is the top arch that will need a visibility parameter as well and this will be called arch T from top. The bottom line visibility parameter will be named line B. And of course the top line will be named line T. Before I proceed, I want to make sure I save my progress, so I will go to Save As and I will just save it here in my documents with the name Riser Symbol. If I go back to Family Types, I can now see all these visibility parameters and they are all checked, meaning that they are all visible. But as I mentioned before, this family will have three different types. So I will now make the first type and I will name it Riser. Since the riser is just a plain circle, I want to uncheck bottom and top line. Now when I press apply, these settings will be saved for the riser type of this family. Next type, it will be called up slash dn which of course means down. Click OK. This first symbol I don't need to see the top arch but I want to see the top line. The last type of this symbol will be called junction and here I do want to see the bottom and top arches but I do not want to see bottom and top lines. Before I load the family into a project, I want to go back to Graphics Overrides window, click on Object Styles and create a new type of line that I will name up slash dn annotation with capital letters. I will now select all the lines and the arches that are part of this annotative symbol and by default these are generic annotation lines. But if I click I can now choose from this drop down the new style of lines I just created. The reason I did all this it is because in a project I would like to control the thickness of my symbol without affecting any other symbols that might have generic annotation lines as well. Now this symbol might work fine but because we just have lines when we will place it over an existing line or object everything that is behind these lines it will still be visible which can create confusion. So before I conclude we need to create a masking region. But because I do not want the masking region to hide my existing lines I will have to create a new annotative family. To do that I will need to go back to file new family and I look for annotations and I will choose again generic annotations. Delete this text and here on the ribbon under the create tab I can find the masking region. I will simply just make a circle and make the radius a permanent dimension. 
Now I can select the dimension and associate it with a new parameter named masking R. And I will make it an instance parameter because it will be easier for me to associate it with the other parameters when I load it into the other family. And before I do that, I want to change the lines of the circle from generic annotation to invisible lines and hit the check icon. Now I can load the family into my project and I cannot see anything because the outline is invisible. But the cursor is the center of the masking region circle, so I will place it right here. I will also align it to the vertical reference plane, lock it in place and then to the horizontal plane and lock it in place. When I select the masking region, on the left side in the project browser under dimensions, I can find the instance parameter called masking R. Now I can click here and make a new parameter that I will also name masking R. This is how I can associate a parameter from another family to this family. And the reason I did this is because I would like to control the masking region size if needed to. I will go ahead and close this family because it is already nested in the other one right now. I will open a project that I made earlier and this is just four lavatories with a sanitary and a vent riser. As you can see the outline is very thick and I could just activate thin lines to see them thinner but I would want to see the thick lines because this way what I see is what it will print. So very quick I'm going to show you how to change that. If I go to graphics, visibility overrides and then under filters tab I can go ahead and add vent and sanitary because these are the two systems I used in this project. And under the line column I can click override and set the line weight to 1. If I go to level 1, this is how Revit will interpret in a 2D manner what you just seen in a section view if the detail level is set to coarse and the visual style set to hidden line. I will try to make this look more plumber friendly. But first let me change the scale to 1 quarter of an inch equals 1 foot because this is the most common scale for details and blow ups. Then I want to change the color of the lines by system. To do so, I need to go to Project Browser and look for the family, then right click and look for Vent. And here it is under the Piping System category. I need to right click on it and select Type Properties. Here I will change the line weight to 5 and the color to orange. When I'm done, I can also right click on sanitary and go to type properties where I can set up the same line weight but the color is going to be green. I feel like these two riser symbols are too tiny and I want to change that. To do so, up on the ribbon, I need to go to systems and by the plumbing and piping category, there is a tiny arrow named mechanical settings. In this window I can find a lot of useful settings for piping system and ducts. For today's video purpose I will just need to look at pipe riser slash drop annotation size under the pipe settings and I will set it up to 5 over 64 of an inch. Let's assume that someone wants to make the vent look like an offset to suggest that it is there even though the vent line is right above the sanitary. To do that, first I need to select and hide the elements I do not need to see in this view. Now I just have the risers and the sanitary line. I will use the detail line command, select the white lines and start drawing the vent. So I will go on an angle, then draw a straight line and then connect to the vent riser. Now I will draw some diagonal lines to suggest the vent of each lavatory. I need to bring into the project the symbol I just created or in Revit terms I need to load it into the project. And there it is, it looks huge. 
I will zoom out a little bit and place it right here. In the properties panel I can now change the size of this beast and I will try to do it also at 5 over 64 of an inch just to show you that these dimensions will not match Revit mechanical system annotation preferences. So in order to get my best match I will change the visual style to wireframe and first I want to change the weight of the line in visibility and graphics overrides under annotation category tab. Here I am looking for generic annotations and click on the plus so I can see the subcategories. Lower in this list there is an up down annotation in capital letters that I made earlier in the symbol family. Let's set up the line to weight 5. Go back to type properties and set up the size to 5 over 128 inches. After some trial and error I find out that this is the closest I can get. I will make a copy here. And before I continue, maybe I should change the visual style back to hidden line. And on the properties, I can change it from riser to junction. And then everything exploded. That's because I need to change the symbol size for the junction too. So I will go ahead and change it also to 5 over 128 inches. I can just use the space bar to flip it around. If I center it over this line, I notice that they are not the same thickness. That's because the weight of the symbol does not match with the weight of the project either. So I need to go back to the visibility graphics overrides and change the annotation from 5 to 6. And seems like now it's too fat. I can fix this by going to manage additional settings and select line weights. Here I need to find the row that says 5 and the column that says 1 foot equals 1 quarter of an inch. Because that is the view scale I'm working on and I will change it to 0.0250. And if you're wondering why 5, it is because the white lines I used to draw the detail lines are set up to 5. And also I set up earlier the sanitary and vent systems line weight to 5. I can now select all these lines and symbols and right click to overwrite graphics in view just for these instances only. And then turn them orange so I can suggest that these are part of the vent system. And the cool thing about these symbols is that if I select one and use the create similar command, I can just hover it over an existing line and when I press space bar on my keyboard, I can align it to the angle of the line. And now I can turn it into any of the three variations of these symbols like the up and down. And this looks way too big as well and that is because I need to set up the size to 5 over 128 inches. I will select this guy right here, right click on it and then change the color to orange as well. I just realized I'm supposed to draw another line right here but I'm not gonna do it now. And if you're curious this is how it looks in coarse view and then when I turn in, three, in fine view it's gonna look like that.